what's new on the Burlington waterfront. Hey, now it's happening at the waterfront on Lake Champlain. Whatever the weather, there's so much to do on the new waterfront, the Burlington waterfront. Hi, my name is Mariah Riggs. I'm the director of the Main Street Landing Performing Arts Center and your host for On the Waterfront. Uh, this month, I am excited to have Shabnan uh, Nolan, who is the executive director of the King Street Youth Center, as my guest. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, um, so um, we wanted to talk about all the amazing things. I don't know how much uh, our audience knows about the King Street Youth Center. But if you were going to uh, paraphrase or summarize what the King Street Youth Center does in Burlington, what would you say? So King Street is a place where kids and opportunity meet, and they do that through learning, play, and community. Oh, that's wonderful. I wish I got to play with kids all the time. <laughs> It's way more fun. fun. It's definitely <laughs> fun. <laughs> so um, let's also quickly talk a little bit about yourself. Our, um, where are you from? So I grew up in Alexandria, Virginia, and I came to Vermont when I went to graduate school. I got my degree in public administration up at UVM. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm actually also a first generation Iranian American. My parents came over from Iran right before the Iranian Revolution. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's and so you grew up in Washington, basically Washington, D.C. That's right. For those of our viewers who might not know, Alexandria, Virginia is right outside The Washington. suburb of D.C. Straight up <laughs> across the Potomac. <laughs> right. You can see the pencil. <laughs> which is a real thing. Yeah. Um, which is such a great community. I mean, that's a very vibrant place to grow up. It is. It's a really vibrant place to grow up. And one of the things that was really special about it is the place where, because it's Washington, D.C., it's the capital of the United States, many people from all over the world came together, mm -hmm. and it made it really special to be among such diverse communities. Because there is a huge uh, disparity and kind of diversity, and, uh, you know, the nation's capital has a lot of wealth, but it also has a lot of poverty. That's right. And... Um, it's kind of one of those places where it really meets up. It is. It is. Um, yes, that's exactly right. And that probably uh, helped you uh, develop empathy. Yes. I mean, I think, you know, it's important for people to be able to understand what it's like for somebody else who maybe didn't grow up in a neighborhood that they grew up in. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people might not be, I mean, I'm sure some of you are aware, but uh, Burlington also has its own uh, disparity. Um, in uh, different populations within the community. Yes, I mean, certainly, you know, like most communities, Burlington also has the plethora of like people who are very low income, people with no income, mm -hmm. you know, people with middle, and then of course people with very high income, yep. as we're seeing with the housing. <laughs> well, it's definitely, it's it's definitely, and I've, you know, I, I grew up here and, I, and I've definitely noticed a shift. Um, you know, uh, Burlington, like a lot of places, has become more gentrified. Um, yes. Particularly over the last 15 to 20 years. Yeah, it does seem that way to me, too. I mean, just since I've been here since 2007, and that's been the case. And um, I think, you know, we're lucky at King Street to be able to be a place where communities come together. Mm -hmm. And I think that that can be really rare in our often polarized world. And so it's one of my favorite things about the center is we've got six different languages that are spoken wow. among the population of youth who come to us. And it's so great for them to be able to learn from each other mm -hmm. and hear different languages and um, really celebrate who they are. That's, that's actually, I think, even for me, um, that's, that's amazing. That's a lot of diversity. It is a lot of diversity and, and you know, quite frankly, not always common across mm -hmm. the state. And so uh, I feel really fortunate to be able to walk in each day and hear the sound of little voices <laughs> and for those little voices to be, you know, so varied. Mm -hmm. it's, it just makes for a much richer community. And it does. And Burlington has that. I mean, uh, there, there tends to be a certain monoculture in Vermont. Right. And so that's one of the lovely things about Burlington is that it, it offers that to a state that can be very monochromatic. Right, that's exactly right. Which is true. Um, so we kind of discussed it a little bit, how you ended up working at King Street, but what drew you to it as an organization? 
So what really drew me to it was two things. Um, one, it seemed to me that, um, you know, in my history, a lot of my professional histi history has been around child advocacy and at the statewide level. Okay. And so working on policies that are good for children and families. And oftentimes um, what I felt was missing for me from that is being able to see how it is realized mm -hmm. when it's on the ground. Yep. And one of the things that really drew me to King Street Center was that you can take those policies and those systems and then you can see how they're actually working mm -hmm. for families and children when you're at the center. And it's been a real uh, joy for me to be able to be able to take that systems thinking mm -hmm. and see what it looks like on the ground and then take that information and filter it back up to the state or whomever mm -hmm. to be able to say, this is what we intended, this is what's happening, like wh what do we yeah. do about that? Yeah, as, as opposed to like, because you have the policy component which is very cerebral. Right. You know, it's very big, big brushstroke, right. you know, mission statements, like thinking about huge populations right. and then actually having like the, the groundwork that's where you're right. actually doing it in the ground, in the community, seeing how it actually rolls out. Right. And That's how right. families respond to policies. Yeah. Um, probably is, a, is, is actually very, very beneficial. Right. And I can, you can take a look at what types of policies um, are in place and what is missing. Mm -hmm. And one thing, just in the summer that I've noticed, my first summer at King Street Center, and one of the things I've just been noticing is that some of the supports we have in place for children and youth during the school year mm -hmm. drop oh, yeah. in the summertime. And so what are we doing to ensure that children are safe, mm -hmm. that they're fed, that they have uh, a roof yeah. over their head, and that they're getting education, right? Even yeah. in the summertime, it's important, right? And so when, um, just look at mental health care for youth. I mean, if you have a, a mental health counselor that's connected through a school, mm -hmm. what happens in the summertime? Exactly, and right? then and then also people have regression. I mean, that's that's, that's right. a real problem too. And then, you know, sometimes it's a safety issue. Right, that's um, right. You know, people have to work. Uh, where do kids go? Right. Um, it's a significant issue. It's, and it's, it's a big part of the reason why organizations like King Street Center are so important because we're a safe place that kids can go to. And beyond being a safe place kids can go to, we're also a place where kids feel like they belong. You know, when you look at our teen population, our teen program is voluntary. Mm -hmm. You know, their, their parents aren't setting them up, they're mm -hmm. choosing to come to King Street Center. So when you have, uh, you know, right now we have like 20 to 30 kids mm -hmm. choosing to come to the center, that means that they're doing really fun and productive things with their day. And if anybody has a teenager and they know <laughs> how hard it is to have a teenager choose anything, I mean, that's- <laughs> It's a big deal. That's probably the biggest recommendation I've ever heard. <laughs> So uh, that's a real thing. It is. It and, is. And, and, it, and it's a safe space, and it's obviously a space where they feel like they're getting growth and, and they're feeling fulfilled in. Right. Um, which is invaluable, especially at that age. Especially. Because that's the age tends to be where, where things, that's yeah, right. people get into trouble. That's right. Yeah. Um, but um, so exactly uh, what do you have? I think that's a great segue into what does the King Street Youth Center summer camp program look like? So it's a lot of fun. They, one of the great things about summer is that even though we have academic programming every single day, mm -hmm. it's mostly filled with just like we like our mission states, you know, connecting kids to opportunities. And that's especially true out in the community during the summertime. Mm -hmm. So they're going on field trips, they're going to Audubon Center, they're going over to the splash pad, they're going to a park around mm -hmm. the area, they're going to Shelburne Farms. Like, they're getting out and about, and they're getting to have a fun summer, which all kids deserve yep. to have. And that's a big thing. And I mean, that's a big part of our community is like summers are set up, especially in Vermont, it's incredibly restorative to have a couple of months of warmth yes. and sun where children get to run and, and, and have exercise and breathe fresh air and be children and just not have eight hours a day in school. Right. Um, I think that's a big reason for why year-round schooling wouldn't work in a place like Vermont. Mm -hmm. yeah. We also don't have air conditioning in schools, so let's talk about that. <laughs> but um, and, and the importance, too, of uh, children, especially, I think, in Burlington, 
being able to get out and utilize the resources that Vermont has? Yes, it's that, that in particular is so important because, you know, most of us who choose to live in Vermont, we're choosing to live in Vermont because we can be outside mm -hmm. all year round. We can go on an amazing, beautiful hike up a mountain and, you know, and, and really get to enjoy the outdoors. And our kids should be able to do the same thing. And that's what the summer is about. And we also have the resources to drive our kid to the park. That's right. And have the time off work to be able to take the hike with them. Right. And those are all things that I think a lot of people take for granted. Yep and that aren't necessarily true for everyone. Right. So having a place like King Street Youth Center allows people to um, be able to have their children receive those benefits of living in the state of Vermont if it's not necessarily available to them. Yes, absolutely. Which is incredibly important. Yeah, we're, we feel very lucky. So um, being newly appointed to the uh, executive director role in uh, late 2021, what is the most inspiring thing you have learned about the King Street Youth Center? Honestly, the staff. The staff have been the most inspiring part of joining this organization. You know, people in many jobs, they clock in and they clock out. And that's just not true for us at King Street. It's, it's people's passion to work there. They deeply care about those kids. They know the families. They get invited to the weddings. I mean, it's truly magical to see how much the community and the staff are all connected with each other. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that has to do with King Street Center and what makes it, I believe, particularly unique, which is we see kids starting at 18 months old all the way up through high school. Wow. And families stay with us year after year after year and many of our families have more than two or three children. Wow. And so if you can imagine if the first one's coming in into our early child education program and then going through you know, a decade of five program and the teen program, then they get connected with mentors. Yep. We're seeing families for over a decade. Wow, so it's, it, it really is like an entire childhood arc. It is. And so actually kind of to d dive a little bit into that, um, you know, for people's understanding, if they aren't really familiar with King Street Youth Center. So there's an early childhood education program. What, is, what, what does that entail? So we have both a toddler classroom, that's where 18 months to three year olds go. Mm -hmm. And then we have our preschool classroom where a three to five year olds go. So cute. Which is, they are adorable. And we also um, have Head Start embedded into both of those classrooms, which is so great for for families, for King Street, for Head Start, it's, it's truly a beautiful partnership. Well, I mean, studies have consistently proven that as long as children get support in those ages, the uh, the return um, on the on the investment of those children is is uh, astronomical. That's right. Early childhood education is critical mm -hmm. to child development, and you have to capture kids when they're young. Mm -hmm and you know, introduce them to all sorts of opportunities mm -hmm. as early as 18 months or maybe even earlier than that, right? And yeah. so um, we are so grateful to be able to be a place where we have a partnership with Head Start yep. and they can help support King Street, the youth we serve and the families we serve. And also getting into those groundworks and developing those relationships with children at that age, it really is like you become, con you're like a constant companion throughout their development. That's right, and, and it, what's, what's really great about it is that, you know, if a child comes into our early child education program, because we're a small center, mm -hmm. our K to five staff, they see those kids, the kids see them, you know, people start to get familiar all with each other, mm -hmm. and it feels like a second home for them, and, and we become the trusted place. For children and, and I would assume for some of the kids at the King Street Youth Center having that secondary home a place of consistency um, support yes. um, having sort of that secondary family option is very valuable for them absolutely because things I mean and s things can be destabilized at home yeah I mean I think you know no matter what income level you're at right there can be instability in yep. a family and that's certainly true in low-income families and in higher income families and mm -hmm. so um, you know, for all children, I think regardless of their race or their home life or the socioeconomic mm -hmm. status, 
it's been shown that having a trusted adult outside of your family mm -hmm. actually improves the likelihood that you're gonna be in a productive, happy adult. Yes. And to be the place that can have not just mm -hmm. one, but multiple trusted adults in the family is really, or outside of the family is really special. Well, and also, and, and also uh, developing those relationships because it teaches you things like trust. Right? I mean, there's one thing in a family, those are your family. So you're always <laughs> yeah. going to love them. We all, we all know with our family, you're always going to love them That's no right. matter what. But having those other, those other contextual relationships mm -hmm. that aren't necessarily just during the school year right. help build that foundation. For children. Yes, especially when services are based on a school year. Yeah. And so what happens is King Street becomes the place where if there's something going on, we can be there to, to make sure that everything is as okay as it may be, right? Yeah. So in Somebody difficult times. Somebody they can times, go to and talk to. I mean, that's right. the other thing too, as kids get older, yes. um, having a place maybe sometimes outside the home that they can talk to people about, talk to people about yes. their lives yes. or what's happening in their lives. I mean, even if it's just boyfriends or girlfriends, I mean, it's, oh, yeah. it's a, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, if I had a place like King Street growing up, especially in those, yeah, older yeah. periods of time where you are you may, I mean, some people have that relationship, yeah. but you may not want to be talking to your parents mm -hmm. about something going on, you know, yeah. um, that feels super private, but you could talk to some friends about it or one of the staff about it yeah. at King Street. And you, and you trust them, and, and you, you respect them, them enough right. to be able to communicate. And learning communication skills yes. are invaluable as you right. develop in life. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why um, right now we have our lemonade program as part of our teen programming. So when kids get to about, I think it's 11 or so years old, before they get to that 14-year-old mm -hmm. age that they can work, they start to build those skills by go going through job club leading mm -hmm. up to the summer, and then working on the lemonade stand on King, or on Church Street. Which everybody loves, oh, the, yeah. <laughs> the King Street Youth Center uh, lemonade stand. And if you get a chance this summer, make sure you go to Church Street and buy some lemonade from the kids at King Street Youth Center because it is a wonderful program and their lemonade is absolutely delicious. I can I can attest to that. Oh, good, I agree. <laughs> so, um, and you know, that, that leads me to another personal interest question. How did the lemonade stand start? Oh, that's such a good question. So I was not here when it started, but it's actually its 25th year anniversary this wow. summer. It's been in existence for 25 years. And the story that I've heard is that our, our community outreach de director, Gabe, mm -hmm. she um, came up with this idea, or she was at least part of who came up with this idea of like, what can we do to, you know, have mm -hmm. the kids doing something in the summer? They can't quite work yet, but they want to make money. They want to be able to learn some of these skills so that once they turn 14, they can have something to put on their resume to go get a job, right? Yeah. And they came up with lemonade and it, the rest is history. It is the classic child <laughs> occupation. <laughs> Um, and actually, I, I just had a great conversation with somebody that there should be more children's lemonade stands. I know. <laughs> I, you know, I just heard that, too. I feel like somebody was saying, you know, they've gone away. Like, lemonade stands, you know, kids selling on the yeah. corner just kind of disappeared. But not at King Street. Well, Enterprise Earship is alive and well at the <laughs> King Street Youth Center, which is very important. Yes. So I think that leads us into, so after after the preschool development, there is a K, there, there is a sort of grade school uh, program. That's and, right. And what is the grade school program like? So we have classrooms for our kindergarten through fifth graders. And what we do there is mostly, of course, during the school year, it's an after school program. Mm -hmm. So during the after school program, our kids come from Edmonds and Champlain. So Edmonds Elementary, Middle, and Champlain Elementary. And for Edmonds, we actually like go up and walk, and we they, you can see them coming all <laughs> walking back down to the center together. And they spend their time after school there. Um, we provide meals to them. We um, have academic time. Mm -hmm. We've been focused on literacy recently. Good. And I mean, we're always focused on literacy, but that's been a big push for us. And um, and I get some just playtime yep. too. So that's really great. And then in the summertime, and then when school is closed on certain breaks, we also have camp programs. Which is incredibly invaluable to a lot of parents who have to work during breaks. 
I mean, I'm one of those parents. No, I, I, <laughs> we, we actually had this conversation between before the show. We are both <laughs> one of, working. Full disclosure, we're both one of those parents, <laughs> um, and it's a real thing. And there is sort of, especially I've noticed since after the pandemic, I believe what I've heard is that there are less of those programs um, um. that are actively running. You know, that doesn't surprise me because it it's hard. Staffing has been a challenge mm -hmm. for us. And um, it's been a challenge for child care centers and after school programs. And um, you need staff to yeah. do the work. Yeah, and to support those children That's right. effectively. Yeah. Um, and there are ratios that you have to have That's right. um, for children. That's right. Yeah, I mean, we're a licensed five-star program. So that means, yeah, we have to abide by very strict standards. Yeah, so what does licensed five-star program, I've always wondered, <laughs> and you're the perfect person to ask, what does a licensed five-star program mean? So basically it's a process that that signals that you're a high quality mm -hmm. child care center yep. or after school program. So the state has developed criteria mm -hmm. okay. and they say if you meet this base criteria you'll be licensed mm -hmm. um, and then if you do this little bit more you can have a star and it goes all the way up to the five really? stars. And so it's like a luxury resort. <laughs> it's kind of like a luxury <laughs> resort. It's also tied for yeah. us to subsidy money. Yeah. And so um, that is actually quite important for mm -hmm. us. Uh, you know, some mm -hmm. of our, many of our families, they take advantage of the state subsidy program. Yep. And so the, the more high quality program that you are, yep. according to the state, the higher those subsidy dollars are for you, which are critical for us to ensure that we can keep our doors open. Yep. Now. You know, to be honest, the majority of the way our doors stay open is because this community supports us um, individually, <laughs> financially, mm -hmm. uh, which is why we're able to ensure that we don't turn children away. Uh, and so I work. think this is also another great opportunity to talk to people in the community about how they can support uh, the King Street Youth Center. Um, so if you were going to talk to our viewership, and let them know uh, ways that they can support the work that you guys do in the Burlington community, uh, what would you say to them? I think what I would say to them is that there's a number of ways you can get involved with King Street. One, of course, is volunteering. We are always looking for volunteers who are going to read with our youth. Um, we're also always looking for mentors, so having those one-on-one -on -one personal relationships with youth. And then... Of course, um, financial contributions are critically important to us as well. Now, you have programs throughout the year, too, that um, act as fundraisers. We do. And one of your biggest and most exciting ones was just this past week. Um, would you like to tell everybody a little bit about the program? So um, the biggest fundraiser of the year that we just finished wrapping up was our raffle. Mm -hmm. And we have the... we. People are amazing, and they really showed up. This community showed up for us, and we had some awesome prizes, and they just picked the winners, actually. I think it was a couple days ago. Wow. Um, but it'll come back next year, <laughs> so you'll hear from us. Okay, um, did everybody hear that? Next year, you have to do the King Street Center Raffle. Got to do the Raffle. raffle. Um, we also, which is, this is just a community event, but mm -hmm. we have a block party that we've been having. We couldn't have it, of course, during COVID, but it was back again post-COVID. I won't Would, say post-COVID, but in the whatever this new version is, um, just this past week we had our block party. Which, uh, if you've never been or participated or heard about the King Street Youth Center block party, it is one of the highlights of Burlington every summer. Um, so make sure you take a look at for that. It happens every year in middle July. It is a blast. It's wonderful. It's an incredible, incredible um, event. Um, and so definitely check that out if you haven't in the past because they do it every year and it's very much worth going to. Yes, we loved it. They throw a great party. <laughs> <We> and <laughs> the tried. kids and the kids the kids are wonderful. Yeah, they, they really are. are. So it's a really beautiful way to see a community come together. Block parties are great. Block party. Yeah. You know, we don't have a, we don't have enough of them in Burlington to be honest. I know, I know. <laughs> if I could do them more often, I would. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's a lot of work. <laughs> It's true. So, um, so after so after a kid gets through uh, fifth grade, what uh, what kind of programs do you have uh, for the older children? So then we have our teen program. Okay. And in the teen program, one of the the nice things about the teen program is there's more uh, independence, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
and they can do the lemonade stand. They get to work those shifts. Uh, they go out and about uh, during the summertime. At the beginning of the summer, each teen gets a bike and a helmet, and they oh. go around town, and they bike to North Beach, or they bike wherever. Um, and they also have their fun time and then their academic time where during the school year in particular, they're catching up on homework while they're at the center after school. Um, they're getting any sort of tutoring support they need or what have you. So um, the team program is a lot of fun. They always mm -hmm. seem to be playing basketball in the gym, <laughs> which is one of their favorite activities. Uh, so, so yeah, the team program has been. And that's incredible. So they actually get a mode of transportation. They do, yeah. They Which is incredible. That's a big part of being a teenager. It's, I mean, just being able to ride your bike around, yeah. right? Because walking Burlington, I mean, Burlington is a walkable city, right. but being able to actually uh, pedal somewhere, get out of like your neighborhood, right. go go explore the world is a big part of being a teenager. It really is. So that also leads me, I mean, maybe some of our viewers aren't aware, but um, if you're going to describe the facility at King Street Youth Center. Um, what would you tell people about ab about the facility, what's there, um, what do you <coughs> offer? So um, the facility is <laughs> is a gem in King or in the King Street neighborhood and in downtown Burlington because we have a couple of really little special things. Um, in addition to, you know, we have a different floor for each of our programs. Oh, which, I didn't know that. Yeah, which ensures ample mm -hmm. space, right, for, for kids to play. We have lots of different shared play spaces like the gym. We have a little playhouse. We have a rooftop playground, what? which is such a um, unique and... I bet the view up there. Oh, the view is great, right? And so, um, oh yeah, and the littles, the little kids, they love it because they do a lot of water play mm -hmm. up there right now in the summertime. And we even have a playground right on site, which is really special because you think about Burlington, there's lots of playgrounds, right? Yep. But you're gonna have to go out and find the park and go to the yeah. playground. We get to have a playground right in the back on our property. And it gets the breeze off the lake. Oh yeah. Which on a day like today. <laughs> you need. Is very nice. <laughs> that's true, it's true, that's right. So that's great, so there's a playground, there's a gym. Um, and so do you guys ever do any activities like, um, you know, pick up basketball games and stuff like that? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think one of the things that we're trying to figure out right now is what does this new version of life look like? Yeah. Because pre-COVID, there was a lot more in and out, in and out, and mm -hmm. activity. And during COVID, all of that really had to shut down yep. no. to keep kids safe and follow all the guidelines mm -hmm. the state had put forth. And now we're coming to a point where we're saying, okay, yeah, how do we open up? What are we going to do? What does it look like to have people back in the building all the time? So mm -hmm. we haven't started pickup games yet. That's definitely yeah. something we did pre-COVID and we'll yep. be looking at post. Yeah, and so I guess that leads me to a, a really important kind of final question. Mm -hmm. What does the future of King Street Youth Center look like? We are asking ourselves that very question <laughs> right now because we've just embarked on a strategic planning process. Oh, wonderful. Yes. And, you know, thinking about coming out of COVID into whatever the new normal is, thinking about having new leadership mm -hmm. at King Street and what we're seeing as changing needs, given what we've experienced in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. What is it that we're going to do next is exactly why we started this planning process. And mm -hmm. we're going to be engaging our community. We're going to be engaging families and supporters and um, we're really looking forward to being able to answer that question in a very concrete way. Which which is which is the key, right? Exactly. And I know that those those guidelines and the things that you're trying to do probably have shifted. Um, the landscape has changed pretty much for everyone. It has. In a post COVID world. It has. And you know, as we look at what will happen next, one thing we do know is that we're gonna continue to do the work that's our core work that we're very good at, which is being a safe place where kids can be connected to opportunities. So uh, again, if uh, people are interested, kingstreetcenter.org is the website for King Street. 
Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, take a look at the website. They have great information about all the work and the programs that they do. Um, thank you so much for all that you guys do for the Burlington community. Thank you. They are a priceless organization, and we are so fortunate to have them here. Um, and thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, it's it been was a delight. Fun. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, it's been a delight. Thank you guys for being here with us today. Um, have a wonderful summer, um, and we'll see you back next week. Uh, next week, next month. <laughs> thank you so much. Take care.